Welcome to lesson six of Learn Biblical Hebrew. So um, I hope that you're keeping out the, the verses that we, we did, maybe in their folded form, put them out somewhere. If you just put them away in a drawer or in a folder, it's often hard to remember to get them out. But if you keep them displayed somewhere on a desktop or on a, a dresser or pinned to the wall in the smallest room, then you've got a time every day when you look at them and it helps you to remember them and it helps you to print them. The, the, the aim of it is to input them into your brain and then 3D print them into your life. So our verse for today is Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7a, the first part of Proverbs 1 7 and it says Yerat Yahweh Reshit Tarath. So here I have the uh, letter by letter translation. As always, I'm afraid I've got into a bit of a mess trying to put the consonants up here and the vowels down below as they are in Hebrew. Yerath Yahweh Reshit Darath. Um, notice that second time around I pronounced the R a little bit differently. That's really the way that it should be pronounced. I don't always get it right. But it should be pronounced like the R in French, as in the word French word rouge, which means red. So Yerath Yahweh Reshit Darath. So that's our letter by letter. Uh, translation. Notice that the Aleph here has a vowel, so I pronounce it Yerath, Yer, Yerath. A bit difficult to get those ones together, but because it has a vowel I pronounce it with a uh. But this one has no vowel, so it's evidently not pronounced. So I just say Reshit Darath, and I don't pronounce that. Presumably, in the very early times, it was pronounced, but by the time that the scribes came to put in the vowels, they added the vowels to the text of consonants that they had, they, they weren't pronouncing it, and so they didn't give it a vowel. And yes, we have one new letter, which is this one here. And we write that with an apostrophe going that way. This one is written with an apostrophe going that way. And this one is written with an apostrophe going that way. And uh, this represents a sound that is still found in um, Arabic today. It's a very guttural throat um, sound made deep down in your throat. Da'arath. Something like that. In modern Hebrew, it's, it's not pronounced but presumably Moses and Isaiah did, as the Arabs still do today, deep down in their throats. So you can try to make that sound if you like. Now for the words. So Yirat means fear. Yahweh, Reshit, we met that word in Genesis 1.1. And this is a new word again, knowledge. Notice that we have three words ending in the T, which I pronounce th, th, yirath, Yahweh, reishith, da'ath. In modern Hebrew, it's just pronounced uh, as a T. Um, the base form of this one actually ends in an H, but here it's linked with the next noun and that's changed its ending. So this is the, the way that in Hebrew you, you would say of. That's why I've put here an of, fear of God. And Hebrew, instead of adding another word or changing the case of the noun like other languages like Greek or Latin do, they've uh, changed the form of, um, change the form a little bit of this first word to indicate that it's linked to the second. Usually it's a change in the vowels, but here also the consonant 
has become changed from an H to a S. So that's why I've written fear of Yahweh. And the same thing here, beginning of knowledge. That's those are linked in the same way. Um, Reshit ends in the T anyway, as we saw in uh, Genesis 1 1. But um, it, it, it is standing here together with the next word. That's why we say beginning of knowledge. Now, um, just another point. Without the um, T, it means fear. That, that's the uh, verb. But when we, we add this, it, it becomes a noun. And um, if, again, if we take the th of this one and actually add a y at the beginning, that gives us the uh, verb, which means to know. But overall, we notice the neat sound pattern that, that's actually lost in translation in English. Yeath Yahweh. These, particularly these two words, um, have uh, similar sounds. They both end in the same word and they both have an R and an Aleph in them. And they also have a vowel in common. And so this, this is deliberately uh, set up um, in the way that Solomon wrote it to make this proverb short and memorable. It, it's, it's briefer than the English and it, by the um, sound pattern it, it's uh, a, a much more memorable kind of, of proverb. Um, whereas we look at these two English words, fear and beginning, they've, they've got very little in common and, and this one's one syllable and that one's three syllables. Whereas in Hebrew, yu'ath reshit, so that they're both two syllables and they share sounds in common. So they make the proverb a much more um, short and, and memorable proverb. This is an unfortunate problem that translators have when translating uh, the book of Proverbs, because if you if you're careful in your translation to get the meaning, which is obviously the first principle of translation. You can get the meaning, but in doing so, you lose the um, the brevity and the aptness of the words that, that are chosen. So, for the proper translation, I've changed it a little bit. Again, this is not the Gospel, but this is just a, a suggested translation. You can have your own translation, perhaps you, you might like to refer to the different English translations to see what they do and take what you like. But I've written reverence for God is the foundation of knowledge. That's I think some translations say wisdom. So I've changed beginning into foundation, which I found in, in an English translation. And notice that I've changed fear into reverence. So that's, that's an interesting point because uh, a lot of people today react against the idea of fearing God um, and they prefer to say reverence. Well, the word does include reverence, um, but perhaps we, we've lost something today when we um, have very little fear of, of anybody in authority. It, it's interesting that the King James Bible uses the word fear and to them it really meant shaking your boots fear. The, the, the thing that interests me about the King James Bible is that many things that are found in the Bible they were much more in tune with than we are today. Thousands of people in Elizabethan English faced real starvation and harvest failures from 1594 to 1597 and the country came close to social breakdown. So when they read in their Bibles about famines, this was a very real thing to them. And the wrath and anger of the monarch was really felt when people were thrown into the tower or executed. 
So when they re read fear God, they took it to mean real fear, shaking your boots type of fear. So very, very different society, uh, very different uh, conditions of life in those times, and in many ways much closer to, to Bible times than our modern Western culture is today. But um, despite that, I, I think we can say that, that reverence, respect, uh, are certainly included, and a fear that regards God as a vengeful tyrant, the likes of which we still see in North Korea, is certainly misplaced. So here we have it. Yeath Yahweh Daran. 